What's up, golf world? What's going on, everybody out there in the golf land? We want to welcome everybody back to Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. It feels good to be back in studio. Kind of be. Yeah, like, welcome back. Yeah, been a while. What, <laughs> I, what the hell? I, hey, bro, I'm up here talking to you barefooted and in my underwear. He's in draw. Too much information, probably. That's true. That's, but, but a lot of people need to understand that's how we do the show. We do that's it true. It, in in our closets and draws. Well, there, there you go. But and, and you know what? It will not stop us providing them with great golf talk coming from a different clubhouse. I, I am joined that. by my boy, my brother from another mother, yes, Dougie yeah. Smith, aka Douglas Smith, yeah. aka yeah. William, mm-hmm. Sir William. And I am Will Lowry. We got a lot on tap I'm, I'm today. The, I'm, the, I, I'm the Will Smith that didn't slap Chris Rock, right? <laughs> you didn't slap me for one of my bad jokes. No, I didn't. And I will <laughs> never slap you. That's just rude and disrespectful. I, 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 I would never let you slap me, homie. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Tapped out. <laughs> we got a lot on tap today. We got a great episode uh, in store. Um, we are. We have somebody who has a different relationship with the game of golf. Uh, a, AI... Sportsbox, Sportsbox AI CEO hey. and co-founder, uh, G. Hey Lee, and we're also going to talk golf. You know, you know, we just had Is a. That what we do? do we do that? We talk golf here. I mean, can I can we're I do my own? Allowed? Can I do my own setup? No. Can I do my own no, setup? You, can't. you don't see fun. me. You don't see me come around your job knocking your setup off. Let me do my setup. Knocking my se- okay. Do, you, do your setup. Okay. Don't, okay. don't knock, I'm not going to knock your setup off. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm sorry. All right. So we're going to have great golf talk. Talking about an exciting weekend at the Masters Tournament over at Augusta National Golf Club. Is the Gusty National Golf Club? Correct me on that one. That's that right. No, you're good. You're okay, good. thank you so much. All right, all right. So, Doug, give me your biggest takeaway this weekend. Uh, my biggest takeaway is um, Scotty Scheffler's the truth. Let's just be quite honest. When he got to number one in the world, I was a little skeptical. I was kind of like, where did he come from? Yes, we knew he had at the time he had won three of his last five events. Now six of his or four of his last six events. Well, and I was just kind of like. I was kind of like, he got lucky. He got lucky, then he got lucky again. He, now he, he he's ridden that luck wave into a major champion. Uh, I, he He's here. He's real. He's the truth. And I'm I'm um, I'm sorry I doubted you, Scotty. Scotty's I, real. I think my biggest takeaway, I mean, I guess probably two takeaways. One is Tiger Woods never ceased to amaze me. Oh, I forgot about Tiger. Yeah, that's right. T, T-Dub coming back with all kind of rods in his leg and accident and he come back he came back on uh thursday and i mean was really extremely competitive i mean i think his what he did was you know surpass everything that we envisioned yeah, and absolutely. also and also you know scotty scheffler again you know you can have more than one way to skin a cat i mean his golf swing's amazing to me you know he got a lot of moving parts mm-hmm. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot of moving parts yes, but damn does. it but damn that's it facts. he he knows what the hell is going on with that golf swing and that's something i being cross and across the line you know got more moves than kung fu can appreciate well the thing was and i'm trying to find it uh, right now is the people that let, let's just rewind we're talking thursday friday will to make the cut. Tiger Woods made the cut. You know who didn't? My pick, Brooks Kepka, Jordan Speed, Justin Rose. Who else? There's a lot of people that we used to see in that. Hey, bro. That Tiger busted their ass it, on one leg again. It, w- it was 508 days since his last tournament, bro. his last competitive round. And you know what? That last competitive round was at the Masters during COVID. No, in twenty twenty November, beat, Tiger busted ass. Let's just be honest, bro. I, I I never I never want to doubt that guy, but I I am. You can't doubt this guy now after what no, he's you, done. You, you can't do it. You and you like and then and the same side. You can't doubt Scotty Scheffler. Like, you, you, can't. you can't do it. And you I, know what? I, one of my other takeaways, Will, was freaking Roy McIlroy backdoors a top two finish, shoots seven under par, didn't even see a sixty four in the final round. Okay, Rory didn't make a birdie. After the eleventh hole, oh, except eighteenth, he pitched it on eighteenth. But you know what, though, that right there he kind of brought the juice back to hopefully his game. You know, for the upcoming rest <clears> of the year, I hope that sets a precedence as for where to what to expect from this guy. Because I found what's it. that I what's found that? it. The people basically who who got Tiger busted they ass. Here we go. Scotty Chef or not Scotty Chef Xander Shoffley. No Xander Shoffley. I don't know okay. why I did that. Yeah, yeah Xander Shoffley, Brooks Koepka, Jordan Spieth, Bryson DeChambeau. Abe answer. Louis Ustase. Well, Ustase and he withdrew. So, whatever. Yeah. He had a back issue. But he's, yeah. you know, Sam Burns, Justin Rose. That's a lot of people that, so, that shouldn't have been beat by Tiger Woods. So, okay, Doug, here we go, real quick before we get into our guests. 
I want to know from you, Mr. Uh, Brandel Shamley. Brown black Shamley. Brand, brown Dole Shamley. I'm black. <laughs> I'm the black Shamley. Beige, beige Shamley. I appreciate I want to know, you know, who have we seen have a start, have a run like this, like uh, Scotty Scheffler? Tiger Woods. Okay, besides the obvious answer, Tiger, I need. I'm trying to get uh, you to. I'm trying to set uh, you up to go in your your bag. No, I feel you know it's fine, but you know we, we saw Justin Thomas win five events in the season. We've seen Jordan Spieth do it as well. But when you really stop and break down the numbers, you're not really seeing guys win more than three times in the season. You know, um, and right now, this is a la, you know, Jordan Spieth 2015, a la, you know. Justin Thomas, kind of in the latter ages, you know, from like 17 to so, 19. So, so here's my question. some really good stuff. It's just, it's crazy. It's do, just, what he's doing is crazy. Do, do you think, do you think we'll see, because you, you know that stat on tour that um, 90% of a, 90% of the earnings of a player in the PJ Tour comes, or he earns within, uh, I want to say, three to five tournaments on the PJ Tour. So do you think we will see this guy towards the end of the year, or you think he's going to fizzle out? No, no. I, I, you know what? He's not going to fizzle out. He's actually just getting to where he. That's what I like about Scott. He's so humble. He never really thought about the wins. He just thought about getting better and doing the work. So when he's he's a very humble champion. I don't think this is a flash in the pan guy. Will he's going to be there? He's going to win again this year. Speaking of getting to, we have a get to uh, awesome interview that we had with G. Hey Lee of Sportsbox AI CEO G. Hey Lee. Beyond the Fairway welcomes in the CEO, Sportsbox AI, and one of my favorite people in the game, Jihei Lee. What's going on, girl? Thanks, guys, for having me on. That was the most emphatic CEO <laughs> presentation I've ever been greeted with. So. That's, that's how it's supposed yeah. to be. That's yeah, how it's you, supposed to be. Yeah, you, you, you got to go, go hard on the C. You got to go gotta, hard. You, you got you to you get that C out. You know what I'm saying? But GA I'm gonna make everybody. I'm gonna make everybody do their their intros over again if I don't hear that again. Or okay, or, that. or just or just have them, or just have them call Doug so Doug can get a paycheck. Yeah, let me do that. Why can't I just do that? You know what? I'm gonna just record that for you, and then I'm gonna just let them push play when you come up on stage, especially like your next TED talk or something. You know, we gonna just let. Matter of fact, I'll just pull up on you, Jihei, and we could do it like that. And then I'll just I'll be your hype man. How about that? Yeah, let's let's travel the world together. Let's do it. Well, speaking of traveling the world, you've been around the world. You just got back from Kenya. How was Kenya? We gotta start there, and then we'll get into some quick master stuff because we gotta talk about master. Kenya was amazing. Uh, two of my business school friends got married. Um, the groom is from Kenya. And uh, it's a 25, 26 hour travel day from San Francisco to get to Nairobi. So uh, we couldn't just spend the weekend there. So we decided to do like a whole safari and beach trip uh, with, the, with the crew. So it was spectacular. I, I had an amazing time. See, Will, she gets to go to Africa. We just. I feel like I'm on a safari when I have to do the podcast with Will. So right there you go. So you know, Jihei, I want to kind of go back. You know, kind of, uh, I guess, rewind just a bit, and and I'm going to ask you this question because I am so fascinated by your story. You know, uh, from you know being in love with the game of golf, not being in love with the game, going in and out of golf with your own volition, etc. I want to know where is your relationship with the game of golf right now? Oh my gosh. I love when people talk about it as a relationship because it really is a relationship. It is. And it, no, you know, it's totally it changes and evolves over the course of your life and, and, and it should, right? So um, right now I'm in a very good place with golf, like very good place where, you know, there's low expectations and whenever I get to be with golf, it's, it's an amazing time and I'm just grateful. Um, and when I play poorly, there's I, I don't I don't take slight you know like it's it's fine, and I just get to be grateful. So it seemed like you chose when to play the game and you chose when to get out. You know you was asking yourself questions. What is this game going to bring me? You know you know during your freshman year at Yale you stopped playing for a couple of years, then went back your senior year. But you said what is this game going to you know, you know what is this game going to do for me afterwards? But I think what makes it so remarkable is that you know did you see yourself in this game? some way, somehow, in a roundabout way, you know, earlier, or you you had planned on like being away from the game because it didn't give you satisfaction all the time. Yeah, I, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the reason why I stopped playing after my freshman year in college was like, 
I didn't see golf being part of my life in any really meaningful way mm. after after school. It's like, what is this going to give me a career? You know, what what is this really going to do? I, you know, I was fortunate enough to get into a great college uh, and you know played all my life and but I didn't really see it being part of my life. Um, so yeah, to be perfectly honest, I didn't I didn't see it that way. See, that's, I, I, you know, it's, it's funny. Well, I think. And I, and I don't know about you, Will, but one thing that I can really identify with Jihei on is, is this kind of love affair with the game? Because mm-hmm. I've, I've fallen out of the game, you know, and it's one of those things where somehow this damn game, it don't let you go. I think, it, I don't know if it's the people, Jihei, or, 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 or just the opportunities, the ancillary, kind of the tentacles that golf kind of affords you. I don't know what it is, but it does kind of keep a hold. So you leave freshman year, you come back senior year. Why? One, I had secured a job after college. I was going to go to Hong Kong and do investment banking. And I was taking maybe two and a half credits my senior spring. I was I was done, right? And I was, I mean, this sounds bad. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was bored. <laughs> Keep it all the way 100. That's real. That's real. And um, the team, the Yale women's golf team, they were having a great time and they were, they welcomed me back. They, they just, you know, I, I remember meeting up with some of them November, December time, um, my senior year. And they were talking about how great of a time they were having, how excited they were for the, the upcoming season. I was like, oh, you know what? Like, why not? Um, let's try this out. You know, my last hurrah. And, uh, I played that season um, and I discovered that my game was more or less intact, even though I took two and a half years away from the game completely. And we won Ivies, which was amazing, right? Um, we won Ivies my freshman year and my senior year. Um, and, okay. Um, All right. so you see how she dropped that in there, Will? You see how she dropped this, just left it right so, there? There, you get, there, no. there, there goes again. Golf loves her more than everybody else. Correlation, not causation. I was part of the team in both years, um, not in between. But you know, you you can make your own judgment about that. Um, but yeah, we we won. It was thrilling. We got to go to NCAA regionals and test my game against uh, some of the best amateur golfers, you know, college golfers. And I, I mean, there was no spectacular finish, but I was you know middle of the pack, and I was like, wow, you know, I could kind of hang, even though I've put a fraction of the amount of effort that these girls have (laughs) (laughs) until now. So I was like, maybe, maybe if I really, really tried, I could make something of myself here. That was kind of like a a spark, um, I guess. Why not? Like, why not? Exactly. That's the, and that's, and that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, you know, we, we're, we're trying to grow the game of golf, but for some reason, it seemed like golf wants to be part of uh, of GA. Like, <laughs> go, hey, baby, can I just be involved some way, somehow? Please. You know, yeah, I promise on. you you can just, leave and come back. It was just, like how, how a girl had me wrapped around her finger. You, you can leave and come back, and I was always accepting a phone call. But I think, I think golf plays mind tricks on you. Golf, first of all, let's get this straight. Like, golf will never love you. Never. Golf will never. never love you back. Ever, never. ever. Like, don't never. ever fool yourself into thinking it's going to be a two-way street. You love it, it'll never love you back. Yeah, the golf don't um, give a damn about it, you, it, your it, feelings. It, it, no. and, and, and that's the thing, that's the thing why I was I so admired about you and because you never let the score dictate your emotions. And, and that's something that can kind of, we can allude to junior golf these days. I'm starting to hear kids when they're in junior golf that if they shoot a 67, they're happy. If they shoot an 83, they're sad. And, and and it seems like, you know, Jihei, that you never let, you never let, you know, golf get create a stronghold. You're like, I'm leaving. I don't feel like being with you right now. I'm out. But I kind of want to fast forward when it comes to, you know, your, your, uh, I guess you're an agent. I mean, you're an agent to one of the biggest stars in all of golf, right? So yep. real quick, pros and cons of being a sports agent <laughs> to a high profile athlete versus, you know, kind of losing a little bit of your uh, your your secretness, the, the mythical stuff yeah. about you, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's charting in dangerous waters here. Um, I, the pros, there's so many pros. One, I mean, it's a little bit of a unique situation because I got to work for my, for my best friend, right? Um, she and I were close while we were playing. We were rookies the same year. And so getting to spend time with your friend on the road and um, do all sorts of really cool things because, you know, it's Michelle Wee and she she does really cool things. 
Um, so that was awesome. But as more generally speaking, being an agent and working in an agency kind of puts you at the center of the universe when it comes to sports industry. So you're kind of the middleman to those who want to spend money, like very just, you know, putting it out there, like brands, you know, entities that want to have the rights to stream content, have the rights to the, the you know, market their product with athletes, like the, those with money, with the rights holders, like athletes and tournaments and, you know, the leagues, like you are at the center of it and you have to be the matchmaker. So it's a really cool place to start a career and see the sports industry uh, from a crazy vantage point. So, so we're um, at IMG? I'm very grateful for that. Were you at, I, you were at, I, I used to work for IMG back in the day. See, oh, you didn't you know that little secret story there. I did there. not know that. No, Jihei, yeah. hey, something that, and, and not to call Sadina Parks out, but I do want to just touch back last season. We talked to Sadina. She talked about getting to the LPGA, and I apologize for going backwards just a touch, but I do want to ask, um, when she got to the LPGA and she, you know, was traveling and traveling, she was underwhelmed, you know, for lack of better terms. She was, I, I think she had worked so hard to get to where she wanted to go. When she got there, she was kind of like, oh, this is it. Not to disrespect the LPGA. It was more of an intrinsic internal, um, you know, something that went off for her. Now, I want to ask you, you did something similar. You played collegiately, left, came back, made it to the tour you play for a couple seasons was playing on the lpga what you expected it was going to be or were you kind of like let down in a sense i was personally blown away um i'm i'm sure that's a that's a very personal experience and it's also like you know the the gap between your expectation and reality and you know where you set your expectations and mm -hmm. what you've grown accustomed to like I growing up as a really mediocre junior golfer and, and college player I, I was I never saw myself in that light in that kind of environment uh, competing against those players so like when I got there it was like oh my god like what's happening in my life I my, my mind was blown and you know my rookie year, my rookie season, so I went through 2009 final stage Q school, 2008 final stage Q school. And that year was Michelle Wee, Amy Yang, Chella Choi, um, who else is there? Stacey Lewis. I mean, like, it was an all-star group, like, Hall of Famers, right? And uh, G.A. Shin was in my rookie class, and she was, I mean, she just won the British Open last week. Like, insane rookie class so to be out there with that class it was uh it was mind-blowing for me well that's what's up so but then you bounced out all right so how did you find yourself your lane when you when you left golf because we want to get into sports box we clearly see it in your shot right so we want to <laughs> get there but <laughs> but what, you know leaving the game trying to find your place like what was that experience for you um first it was really tough uh and anybody who's going through a similar experience of like being in being a professional athlete, like trying to transition, it's a really like it could be a really dark place to be because all of a sudden this thing that you tied your entire like self worth and identity to gets stripped away, and you have to like look in the mirror and be like, who who am I? Like I have no idea who I am anymore. Um, but luckily, I had some great people around me that I've built relationships. You know, Michelle and her agent at IMG, we were like a like a little, you know. Um, the three musketeers out there and so um through those relationships i got to meet some great people um and they gave me gave me a shot um so it's um i can't emphasize uh i can't you know overstate the importance of um maintaining those relationships building relationships um and um uh, when you ask for help people actually like it um mm, so absolutely yeah, so I would. I was really fortunate to be met. You got to be humble so, enough, Will. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think a lot of people have been, like, to, I won't call it the bottom, but been to a place where they really need some help and then will admit that they need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I need the help and understand <laughs> what, what, from a chronological order standpoint, you know, how did you, how did you decide, what made you and prompted you decide to go to, you know, back to school, uh, you know, Wharton School of Business? Yeah. So to set the record straight, straight um, I started my 2011 season and with an idea of, you know, going through the application process for an MBA. 
Um, so I took my GMAT, like I, I was like carrying around my big GMAT book on the road, um, <laughs> preparing for this thing. And my yeah. friends are like, what, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> um, and I submitted, submitted my application December of 2011, um, by which time I knew that I was going to start an internship at IMG. And uh, the internship actually was for a different role. I, I didn't start out um, working for Michelle. I was uh, in events. I was in Singapore, um, part of the team that ran the HSBC Women's Champions. Damn, girl. Um, it was supposed <laughs> to be just a two-month gig, um, but that turned into uh, you know the role with on, on Michelle's team. And when that opportunity came up, I didn't know whether I was getting into any programs, right? I had interviewed, I submitted an application, I didn't know. Um, so I kind of had to like play the odds a little bit. And I said, Michelle, I would love to work for you. This is a great opportunity. My first week on the job with her at the, uh, at the Chevron now um, in Palm Springs, I get a call from Wharton Mission saying, hey, you got in. So um, I had to defer for a year, because I wasn't going to go, you know, renege right. on, you know, Michelle. I wasn't going to just like leave her in the middle of the season. So I finished up that season and some more and started at Wharton uh, the following fall. So 2012, 2013 fall. Damn. <laughs> so you, so, so you're playing, so you're carrying a G, a G MacBook and shooting on the par. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> it was, uh, well, it was an adventure. Well, speaking of impressive and, GA, I've had a chance to be a part of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the research uh, for Sportsbox AI and, and testing some of the, the things that you built. What the hell is Sportsbox AI and why do golfers give a damn? Let, let's just get blunt <laughs> with it. Like, what is it? Why'd you do it? And yeah. what's it supposed to do? So I'm going to talk about the company Sportsbox AI and then talk about the product Sportsbox 3D Golf. Boom. Company is we're a AI computer vision company that is using a unique technology that we've built, which turns 2D videos that you can take on your cell phone into 3D information that can be analyzed uh, for performance in any sport. Sportsbox 3D Golf is our first product out there in the market, and we built it specifically for um, you know, coaching and swing analysis um, in golf. And what it does is it takes a uh, you know, very expensive, difficult to use 3D motion capture system, which is very valuable, um, and put it into your phone so that you can, in the same time that it takes to just take a video with your phone, you can get 3D data. So I get I get more information half the time. <laughs> yeah, well, and you don't actually. Have, yeah, you don't have to go to somebody who yeah, has, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. a motion capture. Look, mocap is 50 Gs, 50 to 100 Gs <laughs> for some of these yeah. products. So. You're giving a lot of people an affordable option to see their swings in 3D. What's what's the the feedback? Because I've seen Sean Foley, Terry Rawls, I've seen Mike Adams, uh, just coaches all over, just using the product. Like, how was it to get? How was it to get them to be a believer in what you were creating? Yeah. So initially, it was relationships, right? It was. Um, people who believed in me, when we didn't have any proof of concept, we didn't have a prototype, they were just like, okay, you're doing this, we want to be part of it, which I'm oh, eternally cool. grateful for. Um, and then you, you just, when those people sign on, you almost like leverage their credibility to bring more good people on. Like Phil Cheatham came on very mm. early days and having Phil Cheatham as part of our team was huge, right? Everybody look at, looked at him and said, oh, if Phil believes in it, I believe in it. Um, and so you kind of like start extending your network uh, that way. And then once we had a, a prototype, we would show it. And I, I'll, I'll never forget the way that Terry described how Sean, Sean Foley reacted to it. He's like, I showed it to him at the PGA Championship. Immediately, he was like, are you still taking money? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to invest immediately. Yeah. Um, and so that's how that came together. <laughs> so it, it goes back to the saying, it's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. But I wanna know, you know, what, what sparked the idea in the first place? So I can't take credit for the idea itself. I became uh, part of the, I joined forces with my CTO who was developing the technology. And my CTO, um, 
uh, Sam Menneker, he's, you know, career machine learning AI expert who's developed like really cool things using AI. And this was just a version of what he was working on um, using computer vision. And uh, I got involved through um, Stephanie Way, who was part of the team before I was there as, you know, the head of marketing. And so we kind of became the three co-founders of Sportsbox. So what what is it that, so let me just take this. Because one thing I, I love and enjoy are those that disrupt golf, right? I think I'm putting you in that category, Jihei, mm -hmm. as a disruptor where golf has, has been very linear and then there's this product that comes and it's like, what the hell, why? Do you view yourself as a disruptor and what do you want to achieve now that you do have some direction, I guess I could say, for at least for the foreseeable future, you have some direction in golf. Like, what is it that you want to accomplish uh, now that you you know who you are, you have this product, you've been around the world, you kind of you know we've all kind of grown up in this game. So what is it that that you're trying to pull off now? So my number one goal is to one democratize access to really good technology that makes an impact on coaching and learning. Like that's something that makes people better, teach better. So like that type of technology, like let's level the playing field, right? Um, why, you know, why do you have to invest like literally six figures kind of an investment to t start teaching? That's crazy, right? So um, I want to democratize access to good information and good technology that makes people actually better. And then, you know, the problem that I set out to solve when I was designing this and the vision that I have for sports box is, you know, when you try to learn something, um, learn a new skill, like I try to learn the piano during the pandemic, you go to Google and YouTube and you get all sorts of good information. There's free information everywhere. But then turning that into actual execution is a whole another challenge, right? So um, because there's no feedback, like you you try to copy them, you know, whatever's on YouTube, yeah. but you're probably doing it incorrectly. <laughs> um, and so that's the learning curve and you kind of have to do it by trial and error. I want that process to be so much simpler, much more optimized. And I think what Sportsbox is building could is like, the foundational to solving that problem. So, I mean, well, you know, you you kind you kind of been in this pred uh, predicament before when it comes to the innovation <laughs> arm of uh, growing the game. You know, being attached to Top Golf. Uh, you know, talk to us about your relationship with Top Golf and how did that come about? Because obviously, Top Golf is one of the major off the course, you know, revenue streams, you know, pipelines to get people in the game of golf, and that's credit to you. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can take credit for that, but. It was an awesome, awesome company to be part of. Um, coming out of business school, I uh, met with the the chairman um, Eric Anderson when I was in business school, and he just kind of gave me a job. Like again, I, I have no idea <laughs> why, but he's like, "Look, I think you're talented." And I'm like, "Really?" <laughs> um, uh, and he just said, "What do you want to do?" And I kind of got to write my own job description, um, and uh, I got to yeah. see the company go from you know, 12, 13 venues in the US back in 2015 to, you know, when I left, I think they, they had 62 venues globally and, Damn. you know, Top Tracer was part of the company and Top Golf Media, all these cool brands, like sub brands under the umbrella. And it was an amazing, amazing place to be during that time. And I knew, I knew, um, you know, factually, like there was data backing this, like how much of an impact we were having in growing the game, getting club in people's hands and, you know, sparking that joy of hitting a good shot, like one good shot, that which one. is all it takes, right? One. All it takes to convert. One yeah. Out. You know, G, hey, I, um, before we wrap up, there's a couple, there's something I, I, I have to discuss because Kira's a friend, Kira K. Dixon, shout out to Kira. So. You caddied for her last year in the American Century Championship. Now, I heard that she hit a bad shot, but then she recovered and wanted a high five from you, and you left her hanging. I, I need to know more about why you left Kira hanging when she tried to give you a high five. I just need to, I, that's that's for me. I need to know this. Look, I don't give high fives for bogeys, okay? <laughs> it's as simple as that. I don't high five for bogeys. <laughs> And she knows that. That's the standard. 
So if, 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 if so, mediocrity. It, 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 so if it's an internal par, but actually bogey on a scorecard, you're not giving no love. No high five. <laughs> no high five. You know what? That's that's. I appreciate that, but I also know I, that. I told, uh, uh, I told my husband when he was uh, starting to play golf, um, we're gonna play nine holes, and your goal is to hit five good shots. If you don't hit five good shots, we're not eating lunch. So. Hey. That's the that's the standard. See what? Well, well, you know, you know what, you know what, G A, you will be around golf, but I know caddying is not in your future. It's not. No. <laughs> but you know what? She there's this British accent that I heard about. You know, you you were you're a Love Island fan, G A. So I need to. So what's what's up with this British accent I keep hearing about? I'm just letting you know. I, I, yes, I fact checked you. I'm just letting you know. My British accent is awful. I'm not even going to try to do this on air. Like, I, this is a secret thing that Kira and I do, and it's not meant for public consumption. Okay? All right, well, we gonna put, we'll put it out there. You won't give them, you know, a, a hint of what it sounds like, but we know now. We got, we got secrets now. Now, we send everybody out of here the same way, right? So we call it Rap Foursome. You're going to pull up to the golf course. You're going to play golf with four rappers. You're going to play a five ball. I don't care if they're dead or alive. Play golf, don't play golf. G. hey. Who are you pulling up to the golf course with? Man, um, I would love to have uh, Snoop Dogg, Drake, um, Snoop Dogg, so that he can narrate. Like I just want, I just want to hear him narrate the course of our round. <laughs> You know, in his voice, that would like be a, a dream come true. That'd be funny. That would be funny. Um, and um, I have to say Kanye. And um, yeah, so Kanye, Drake, Snoop Dogg, and let's throw Eminem in there. Eminem. Mm, so you, Just want, you, little, want... you, know, you need a little little uh, dynamic, you know, like, you, you, yeah. You want love, commentary, and get high. I see. Mm-hmm. She wants. She gonna be all the way up in the stratosphere. That's what. She, that's what she's trying to take. Sports box. Why not have Snoop nearby? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I want. I want Eminem to emote for me when I hit bad shots. Like all of that anger. I think he will do it a lot more effectively than I. That's, that's a bogey, Haley. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with, man. That's what I have to deal with. Well, GA, thank you so much. Going beyond the fairway with Will and myself right here, Golf Channel NBC. We'll see you. I don't know. We'll see you when we see you. Probably Tahoe will be next time. But we appreciate you, girl. Right. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Me. Appreciate it, homie. Beyond the Fairway podcast is presented by Genesis Motor America and the first ever GV70. Dynamic design and exhilarating performance. Make the game your own. And G. Hey, Will, she's, she's made the game her own. There's she, she, she. It's like I feel like playing. Eh, let me play. I'll stop by. I'll hit some shots. Okay, we'll win the Ivy League championship. You're welcome. You right. know, you, just, you know, and, you're welcome. And, and and I'm gonna be part of some innovation with the with a company that's going to rock the world off the course. No and deal. I'm going to create something that's going to help minimize you know the workload when it comes to teachers. <laughs> when I tell you, when I tell you, when I tell you, golf is begging for her, just love me back, G. Hey, just love me back. I'm telling you, that, that's that's the way, that's the way it is with her, man. She got no. she got it she got it down pat. No, G. Hey, she's awesome, man. She you know allowed me to be a part of you know some of the initial research. They had me all wired up. Brian, I'll have you throw some pictures up and and swing and Phil Cheatham, who we didn't mention, is one of the the most re- world renowned biomechanists in the world, and he chooses to spend time in golf. So if you want to know what this joint is supposed to do, my my you know my lead index. finger, my index finger, mm-hmm. like Phil Cheatham knows like how it's supposed to move and torque and how much force it can hold. Like this dude is all world, and like she said, once you get somebody like Phil Cheatham. The Sean Foley's is coming, right? The, the, the Terry Rawls's and the Mike Adams is they coming, and you know it's she's done. She's disrupted the game of golf. Well, I've I've used it to help players, uh, you know, to coach players, if you will, or, or help, you know, you know how we all help each other, mm-hmm. you know, in this space, and and you can see things in this app that you you can't really see, you know, with the naked eye. So it's um it's gonna change the world. It's gonna change the game. It's already doing it, and and you know, G Hey. Will you take my money? Like I've never. Will you take it? Can I invest? Where do I? Where's when's the when's the second round of funding coming? Let me see if yeah, I can make I, some cheese off this. I, this is I, this is I had, smart. I have tens and tens of dollars I want to give to her. 
I already know you do. I already know you do. We had that conversation when the camera stopped rolling. Like, ones and ones of dollars. That's it. <laughs> hey, if I can see two X on a hundred dollars in, in a year, you know, that's a good investment. Man, who you I telling? Mean, <laughs> babe, a big shouts out to G. Hey Lee and all she is doing for the game. I mean, again, you talk about somebody that's making the game their own. Ain't, ain't nobody doing it like G. Hey Lee. That's for damn nah. certain. It, 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 oh, sorry. I was, just wanted to add to that. That ahead, that's what, what she's doing right there is going back to that systemic change. Like that is going yeah. to be lasting. It's going to last well past her, well past her kids us. And, and us, everybody. So again, kudos to her. You know, I love the kudos word. I know you, Will, you love your kudos. Okay, Mr. Kudos. Who are we going to give more kudos to though? Which, which were you more impressed by? Tigers round Thursday versus McElroy's round Sunday. Hmm. Great question. I might have to go with Tiger, bro. Yeah. I might have I, to go I, with Tiger. I, I mean, when yeah. you, I, I mean, I agree. I agree. When, when you, when, when you say it, it was, it was one thing that Tiger awarded us his presence at the Masters. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Tiger. And and, and we were all we were already happy about that. You know, it was up in arms. We were, you know, every uh, uh, sports media outlet was all over my television. That's one thing. But yeah, to go sure. out there to go out there and perform and execute, and it's almost like, what does he execute off off what? I mean, off what previous play? I mean, I mean, where, where does he practice? He made a statement that really stood out to me. He said he had to go back and look on how to the greens were breaking he haven't seen a break 10 for 10 you know 10 yeah, foot break, break. Yeah, 10 yeah, foot yeah. break in probably you know a couple years that right there in a major championship like the, the balls though to come back at a major like right 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 the, the balls he come back at a major. Up. he didn't right. have no warm up he didn't right. play like he didn't play the off event there at the putacana nothing bro he, he i'm looking I'm here i'm, I'm showing looking, up Hey, hey, check this out. I'm looking to do I'm looking to do a one day event before my debut at APGA this year. So right, he should, he, he, yeah, Tiger could have played an APGA event. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. like feel some feels, brother. Like you right. Can, I mean, do you know which way you? Yeah, you come back at Augusta. Like of what? all the places, the hardest walk, the hardest course, the most uh, demanding shot shape course you could play. You got to hit it high. Can't hit it low. Can't bounce it in. That's where you want to come back. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, because I, I know, I know your, I know your, I know your, your waist. <laughs> the light hit them just right. Sorry, my back caught me off guard. <laughs> Man, got currents, not waves, currents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you know, I, I, I'm, I would love to see, um, you know, AI's. I'm excuse me, I would love to see uh, his sports box AI. You it's, know, it's out whatever. there. G Hey posted you know. this. She got Tiger swing on on sports box right now. Be sure to go sports box AI on Instagram, Twitter, all that, because that's where you can see all these swings. She got Scheffler swing on there. Scotty's Rom. She got everybody's on. There. Is, it, is his got... right foot? Is is Scheffler right foot moving all over the place on that uh, sports box? I can't confirm or deny that. Y'all have to check it out. Let us know. You know, uh, but Will, look, I was excited for Rory McIlroy's round, but I still think between the two who had more fun during during th those rounds, Tiger Woods. Never seen him smile. Never seen him act like he was thankful. Never seen him just be gracious. It was dope to see a Dog, different side of Tiger his, Woods. His interview, his interviews were so you know, so it seemed like he was vulnerable. Mm. You know, I know which you is, like that vulnerability. That's, yeah, that's your, that's I, 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 I'm a little softy, so I, I love the fact that he makes me feel like he is approachable, even though we'll still get arrested and shot. However, his his uh, his interviews, you know, post post round were uh, very captivating for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, I hope y'all enjoyed the Masters like we did. But look, we still got a full season of more interviews, more golf to talk about, more stuff to break down, more shit to talk. Yes, I said it, Brian. Bring the beep in. That's fine. But hey, follow, listen, subscribe, Beyond the Fairway, wherever you get your podcast. We're on IG as well. Hit us up. Let us know. We're going to be everywhere, right? We got some travel coming up. We got, I ain't going to tell you where we're going. We're just going to show you. So stay tuned. Beyond the Fairway, presented by Genesis. Why would you not take us with you? I don't understand. So do that. Will, always good to see you, bro.